finally, uh, I, I wanted to kind of end our conversation on this last topic and really just kind of give everybody a little bit more time to, to expound here. So talking about the future of cybersecurity and cyber liability insurance, what what do you guys see? And, and let's let's start um, with, with Matt here again. What are the emerging trends in cybersecurity and cyber liability insurance? How can organizations prepare for the future? And what should they be thinking about um, as, as they kind of ingest and actualize all of this intelligence? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, answer it, I mean, in real general, I mean, we've definitely summarized a lot of that, you know, here on the call today, obviously, I mean, it's it's more of a proactive approach, it's more of a, you know, an environment where the security and technology pieces that are being put in place are designed to address, you know, what those real cyber liability risks are. Um, and I think, you know, like every industry, as it involves and embraces technology, um, I think we're just going to continue to see more and more of this. And, you know, to your point, Stephen, I, I don't think cyber liability will be sold the way it was five years ago ever again at some point. Um, I think every carrier, everyone's going to recognize you do have to be proactive. You need the controls. You need these measures in place. Um, so I think that's going to be a big part of it. Um, and I also think the you know, introduction of these, you know, non-insurance products um, through trusted, um, be it insurance agents, financial advisors, attorneys, accountants, um, you know, a lot of people still turn to those, you know, kind of trusted professional sources. And I think they need to start recognizing and implementing, um, you know, some of these components. Um, if you're going to provide somebody financial advising or financial risk management or estate management or whatever you might call that service um, if you're not recognizing this real risk um, that exists out there um, particularly in a corporate or commercial landscape um, it's you know you're really doing a disservice to your customers um, so whether you're you know finding a, a, a trusted individual within your network that you can refer these businesses to um, whether you're working directly with, you know, a, a group like ours or going straight to Antigen for the, the security solution on that side. Um, I think that's just going to be a big part of it. Um, it's no longer going to be really a business where the insurance is completely separated and insulated and isolated from the technology piece. Um, and I also don't think it's going to be limited to professionals in the insurance world. Um, I think there's going to be outside, you know, firms and brokerage groups and organizations that recognize, um, you know, just like the groups that are out there doing the installing the fire suppression systems and everything else. Right. They're mm -hmm. getting referred somehow. And it's usually through some sort of insurance relationship. But um, the building inspectors are aware of it. The contractors are aware of it. It just becomes kind of part of that culture. Um, and I think it'll continue for a long time to be delivered through kind of a, a professional resource. Um, but I think that's something that industries are going to have to embrace. And um, it's definitely something I mean, I'm excited about in general. Um, there's always been a need for more proactive non insurance measures to be available and offered as a risk management solution through like those trusted resources. So that's, that's my thought on it. I, I definitely see the trend moving that way. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Matt. And I completely agree. Ryan, what are your thoughts here? I know we talk a lot about kind of next generation cyber insurance and, and just what this industry is doing in general, both from kind of the recovery and IR side, as well as the carrier side. What, what are your thoughts here? I mean, I think the first thing to understand is you're never going to arrive, right? You're, you're never going to meet the day where you've done everything you need to in cyber because it changes too fast. So I think as a smaller organization, if you're working with a service provider, the, the questions you need to start asking them in those quarterly business reviews is what are you doing to stay current? What controls have you put in place? Right. I mean, being really forthcoming and forcing them to be forthcoming with their strategy. And then for the folks who are large enough to have those internal teams, what am I doing to keep my staff current? But the nice thing that's happening to cyber is your your renewals become an event to say, hey, how are we doing? What are the new things that they they introduced? Um, yeah, I think. Um, I think there's a lot changing. I think, I think, I think the maybe I'm wrong on this. You two on the phone call know way more than I would. I, I do think the underwriting component over the next year or two is going to get simpler because there's going to be a lot more education and data, and it's just going to become like more expected. Where right now it's foreseen as this very like big event that what am I going to have to do or change? So I, I think that's a good thing, and I think I just like people to think like I think these changes are being put on us pretty authentically. 
right? It's, it's not a trick, right? To get you to spend more money to get you, you know, we're really, really trying to limit risk that you are encountering on every day and you don't even know it. So I, I think, you know, there's opportunity to trust, you know, whoever you're working with on the insurance side, that if they're telling you to do it, there's reason for it. And on the service providers th side, same thing, you know, they're close with a lot of the carriers, they know what's coming. So when they're asking to put these controls in place, you know, there, there's reason for that. So I'm uh, I'm bullish on where we're heading in a good way. I you know I obviously don't think ransomware is going away. I think there's going to be something new, but I think if we can start to really understand how to limit the blast radius and take something that could be catastrophic and turn it into a two or three day event versus ninety days, that's where everyone starts to do a lot better. And this you know we we know how to react to this more comfortably. So I think all good things coming. Awesome. Thank you for that, Kirsten. Last but not least. Yes, well, I, I concur with everything. And you know, the thing I would add is, is and we've kind of started with this too, is, is the financial component is what's driving these changes. And I've long felt from the very beginning that as long as we couldn't really draw a straight line between those two points, we were going to struggle with convincing people that these are good things. So now we have the attention of everyone. I think one of the, the key things that we have to do is build the trust bridge a bit to the carrier side because I, I hear it all the time. No, they don't actually pay claims. No, they're going to like cut everything out. It's just watered down. There's no point. I'll self-insure. You can fill in all those things. And I think that to to both Matt and Ryan's point that that's not really what's happening. There's actually a desire to make sure that there are the proper ways for us to help compensate people for these financial losses. But that means you have responsibilities too. And in, and the new one is around systemic losses as an example. And I do believe that our, probably our next frontier are some weird you know, systemic cloud losses. And so how do we deal with that? And, and I think there's good and just reason for having those as, as exclusions, but you know, what happens if that happens? But we, we would literally bankrupt the entire system if, if we were to just give everyone the normal limits. And so I think proactively carriers need to stop saying, hey, we're just not gonna cover it and start thinking, how do we help start to really figure out what these next things are going to be and how do we work together and, and like how do we proactively, because we've been talking a lot about proactive, proactively start measuring those things because we know that's what's coming. And I think that those are the things that as we start to look at those trends and the other is get ready to give up data because this whole thing, like I'm not giving you any data, so you just got to figure it out. Those days, just yeah, like I just- work. I, I don't understand why people put these things in their cars, but they refuse to let people have any visibility into their corporate networks. We don't want to read your email, right? And so I think that helping be transparent about those things too, because that helps us all get really a lot better. And so- Well, and Kirsten, if I could add on to this, yeah. you will see the data eventually. You will, that's and it's, right. And it's when they're breached. That's right. <laughs> right? And, that's and I think that's what a lot of people lose sight of. And what's funny is, I have a completely different perspective. I can't believe some of the things the carriers pay out on. Yeah, like multinational manufacturers that are running like server 2003 infrastructure, right? I mean, there's, I, I've seen carriers pay things I'm like, holy smokes, y'all paid for that, right? There's, so I, I think there's, there's like a balance going on. But the carriers don't say that they're doing it. And so you see all this nasty press about all the things they aren't doing when you're not hearing about all the things they are doing. And I think that that's the transparency thing that we have to fix. I completely agree with you. I'm like, are you kidding me? You paid that? No, I think you just hit the nail on the head with the biggest change and it's data, mm -hmm. right? Because one, the underwriting applications require you to share much more data. It will be validated if there's a breach. So don't mm -hmm. lie because you're going to find out. But two, you know, I will go back to life insurance. They take my blood, they pull my hair, like they get, they get that information. And I, I think that data is going to be tremendously valuable, like to our future. Now, yeah. tons of questions of what y'all are going to do with the data and where it's going to sit and what your protocol, those protections are to keep it safe. Those are the questions I would be asking, yes. right? But I, I think to your point, no one's trying to see your email. I think from an actuary perspective, you're trying to say, okay, when we have EDR in place, when we have MFA in place, when we have segmentation in place and there's a breach, what was the scope of that versus the three people who didn't, right? And and exactly. that allowed us to get more efficient in pricing and packaging and in policy. So, because I think when we get there, what we're able to do is to get to the point where we can simplify, because we can say we know these four things really work. Yep. And and what's challenging in this in relationship to what question is is we're not really sure. All we know is what doesn't work. 
but that doesn't give us the, the vantage point of all the things that are working. And I think that that's really to, and I think that's the exciting piece is I, I think we are going to get there and, and we, but we all have to decide that we have to row that boat together. And so the collaboration piece I think is really where we all have a massive opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, no, completely agree. And I think, I think Ryan, to your point, well, really to both of your points, uh, insured have to stop looking at their carrier like they're an auditor and look at them more like a risk management partner and they're on your team yes they, like, <laughs> if, if you're not aligning all of this before the bad thing happens man is it going to be way worse for you and and it's it also uh to the point both of you or well all three of you made about the actuarial differences that are coming in the future you know cyber insurance carriers are have gotten smarter are getting smarter are thinking now about you know not just historically what has happened the the best ones are saying you know in the last 12 months how much did these particular patterns or anti-patterns how how did these things affect current modern ransomware how do these things affect current modern business email compromises how did this affect data extortion did it prevent it or did or did these patterns actually prove ineffective and those are the conclusions the quantitative conclusions on the actuarial side that i think a lot of carriers are both interested in and focused on and i think the continued focus on that that data element um to, to that to the point that you all raised is gonna put those carriers in a position where everything that they're providing on the requirement side is is not only prescriptive, but well justified. And the ROI will be an easy conversation to, to walk down the road. Yeah, and Stephen, I think the ROI, that's a good point. I think the, the carriers with messaging can help, uh, from my opinion, in terms of like, we're not asking you for perfection. One, we know it's not possible. Two, we know it costs too much, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's not like the carrier saying, we're, we're asking you to put something in place to ensure you can never get breached. Right, because the, what that would cost would likely put many of the SMBs we've spoken of out of business. Mm -hmm. Right, I think just everyone being forthcoming and transparent with the why, and you know, based on your size, here's what we think, and here's some potential costs to you, but the savings in the event of something happening is significant for both of us um, is going to be very helpful. It's two things: it's mean time to know, mean time to remediation, and yep. the quicker we can shorten the distance between those points, the mm -hmm. better off we all are, and that's what we need to understand. Yeah, I completely agree. 